it, it felt worse at night than it did in the day, but as soon as a cop car would get behind me, I would be like, I'm not speeding, and I would be looking to see if it was him. After a 10 News investigation into the conduct of 10 police officers in Knoxville, this was back in September, a second woman has come forward to say she was stalked by one of the officers in our report. She describes how hard it was for her to report the officer to KPD and how scared she was to say something. 10 News reporter Cole Sullivan continues her story in this 10 News investigation. Cole. Charmaine Nichols says 42 year old officer Larry Presnell stalked her in 2010. She told KPD about it at the time, but it wasn't easy then and it's still not easy to talk about it now. Her story begins with a simple speeding ticket. I deserved a speeding ticket. I was going eight or nine. I may have been going 10 miles over the speed limit. So he was doing his job then, but he wasn't doing his job when he came back. Charmaine Nichols says the day after he pulled her over on I-40 West, KPD officer Larry Presnell was at her front door. She says officer Presnell told her not to worry about the ticket anymore. He'd put it down as a warning. The next day, he came back. She had a drink in her hand and offered him one. Presnell said no and left, but she says he came back again and came toward her. He said, would it be okay if I asked you to give me a hug? And then I knew there was a problem. She says she pushed his wrists away and asked him if something was wrong. I made a little bit of room for maybe he misunderstood who I was or uh, my kindness. Maybe he misinterpreted it. But I thought I straightened it out when I immediately said, is something wrong? Even after he left that day, she says it did not stop. Presnell called her over and over again and came by her door at least five times. Nichols says his repeat visits scared her. He was bigger than her, in uniform, and she was afraid he might do something to her. I got on my phone every night when I was coming home. Uh, I called a guy friend or a girlfriend. I called somebody to be on the phone with me when I walked in the house. Nichols' story sounds a lot like the one Sheila Baker told us last month. In one day, he drove by 15 times. 15 drive-bys, then it got worse. Baker says she reported Presnell for sexual misconduct in 2016. He said, I was hoping that you'd be in a nice little sexy lingerie. Really? When Nichols heard our story with Baker, she reached out to tell us her own interaction with Presnell. In 2010, the breaking point for her was when he showed up on her sun porch as she got ready for a shower. And I went into the bathroom and I pulled um, a chest across the door. He called and left her this voicemail. Well, you know, your back door's cracked open. I don't know if you knew that or not. He was in the shower, in the bed, or he went somewhere. In a recording of her internal affairs interview obtained by 10 News, Nichols says she does not want a formal inquiry or any punishment for Presnell. She just wants him to stop. I said, I, can, I consider you to be on notice about his behavior. <laughs> This is Officer Presnell's interview with Internal Affairs. She had alleged that there was a time that you came into her house and asked her for a hug. Do you recall that? Yes, I did, yeah. yeah. Some issues going on, always just talking in general. But no, it was nothing aggressive or nothing. I, I've been down that road and that's not a road. I want to go down it. Was it wrong? Probably was wrong. After hearing this story, investigators told Presnell not to see her again. He did not make further contact with me after that. A KPD spokesperson says there was no additional discipline because Nichols asked for there not to be. Given that, the spokesperson said they did everything they could. From the very beginning, the spokesperson says, her allegations were taken seriously by the Internal Affairs Unit, who handled her complaint exactly as she wished, counseled Presnell, and brought the issue to an immediate resolution. We also talked to Presnell himself. He told me, quote, all of this is coming out now, and I've dealt with it once, and now my family is having to deal with it again. Presnell would not say whether he would do anything differently looking back. He resigned after Sheila Baker's complaint in 2016. He says because, quote, I was just over police work. Even though she thought Presnell's behavior was wrong, Nichols says it wasn't easy to come forward. I feel very foolish about it that I didn't report it immediately. Nearly a decade after Nichols reported him to Internal Affairs, she says her interactions with Presnell impact her to this day. Even at my age and my experience and my own experience in the legal field, I'm still a human being. 
Nichols and Baker both say it was difficult to come forward with their stories, and we know they're not alone. A 2018 study says four out of five women and almost half of men report being harassed. Rights groups say victims often find it difficult to report authority figures like bosses or doctors or police officers. The nonprofit group Equal Rights Advocates has resources for people struggling to report harassment. They say, first, if you're comfortable, tell the person to stop. Next, do research on procedures and policies that the organization involved. And finally, document everything that happens, including what you said and when. Robin and John, that will help officials if you choose to take action and report it. We have a lot more on this story on our website. Cole Selman, thank you. Well, today